Oh, I thought that might go over the glass. Jesus, that was close. All right, I want to change the lines, but last time I did that, oh my God, Roman Yossi, not like a shorthanded goal on a seven minute power play and the Jets win. Roman Yossi, our best player, turns it over. Oh my God, not like this. And again, the Nashville Predators lose in the first round in overtime. It continues. <laughs> All right, Nashville, we are back after the horrible playoff run. Seven minute power play and a shorthanded goal to end it in game five. I have truly become a Nashville Predator general manager. So it's time that we head into the year one offseason with your Nashville Predators and figure out what we are going to do. We got our Twitch scouts right here, and I've spent the last 10, 15 minutes talking about what we can do, what draft picks we can go after, and essentially what should be our blueprint. Do we blow it all up? Do we fire sale? Do we say, do we say screw this team and just trade everyone? Or do we just have patience and continue with our plan of the two-year cup, uh, cup run window, all right? So before we get to the NHL entry draft, let's just go over what happened in the last video. Oh, man, as painful it is, as it is. Round number one up against the Winnipeg Jets. Now, I feel like we were actually a good team in the first two periods. But for some reason, I don't know if it was our goaltender. I don't know if it's a lack of poise. I don't know if it was their team. I don't know if it's just coincidence. But we failed in the third period each and every single time. In game one, the game that we won, we were up 2-0 in the third. They scored two to tie it up. We got the go-ahead goal. They scored two and tied it in the third. Game two, I think we had a 1-1 uh, a tie going into the third period or a 1-0 lead. And they got two more goals again in the third. I think it was a 1-1 tie. Kyle Connor again. So again, a third period where we give up two goals and give up the lead. Games three, we had a 2-1 lead going into the third period. They scored two and then the empty netter. Again, giving up the third period lead. In game four, we were up 1-0 going into the third. They get two goals to beat us 2-1. Again, giving up the lead. And in game number number five we were actually down 3-1 in the third but we got two goals Phil Kessel tied it up and we had the go-ahead marker giving us a 4-3 lead and what happened they tied it up and sent it to overtime each and every single one of these first round games they tied it in the third period so we were in a good spot we were actually simulating well just for some reason we shit the bed in the third period and uh, could have got lucky in game five maybe forced a game six you never know what happens in the game six and game seven but that seven minute power play shorthanded goal against was absolutely brutal so what do we do what do we do you come back next year with this team you got to think the team is not going to be as good this year or uh, next year as it is this year some of our players are older they're getting worse uh the goaltender situation uc sorrows i mean a 905 save percentage during the regular season not great but i'm more concerned with the 902 in the playoffs you see what I mean? Like, it wasn't even completely his fault, but when you look at Connor Hellebuck, 933 save percentage or whatever, it's just not worked out. But the, um, it's just not working out. But the offense, the lack of offense was our real uh, Achilles heel. Matt Duchesne, we're paying this guy $8 million per year to get one point. To get one point. Now, somebody pointed this out to me in the Twitch chat. Shea Weber, who is 70 overall, on the third line defensive pairing, played one game and got two points. Matt Duchesne on the first line, getting all the first line power play time, playing five games, got one point. That is absolutely unacceptable. So was it Matt Duchesne's fault? Is it our head coach? Was it our line combinations? I don't know. But what do we do with this squad, right? So a lot of people saying, if you're going to start the blow up, it starts with Roman Yossi. Now, Roman Yossi, 94 overall, exact franchise potential. I don't feel bad about holding on to him for one more year. Because worst case scenario, that drops to exact elite potential. He'll still be 93. He'll still be 92. He'll still have that trade value. And what I can do with a guy like Roman Yossi, if we're going on a full-on rebuild, I can retain half of his salary. So let's say I trade him this year. It'll start this year. One, two, three, four, five. He'll have five years left as a $4.5 million defender. I can really help out some other team. And that's a boatload of trade value coming back the other way. Uh, Philip Forsberg can stay. Matt Duchesne. He's got some years left. I don't think it's easy to get rid of these guys because after what the uh, entire league witnessed, why would they want them, right? Um, hold on to these guys for one more year. Ekholm's a little bit older. Ryan McDonough is getting up there in age as well. 
So I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. I think I know for a fact we are not going to be able to trade up for the first overall pick. Now, I will, I will entertain potential trade ideas. We will go over them. And I will read through the YouTube comments at the end of this video. But realistically, boys, Connor Bedard, first overall, how the hell are we going to get that? I mean, acquiring him, unless it's some playoff-bound Stanley Cup contending team with the first overall pick... Trading Roman Yossi for the first overall doesn't make much sense. I think it's the Buffalo Sabres with Connor Bedard, right? And they, I mean, they have a young team. Why would they want to pass up on him? So I already know, we already went through the dra potential tr uh, uh, draft picks that we can acquire this year. Let's just jump into the NHL entry draft. If I'm going to make a big time trade, I'm not going to force it. And let's see what we got. So the Buffalo Sabres, ladies and gentlemen, the Buffalo Sabres, all right? They don't want to give up their first overall pick. I like take a look at their team. They got Owen Power. They got Rasmus Dahlin. They got Dylan Cousins. They got uh, Mark Matthew Savoy. They got Tage Thompson, who's broken out, right? Like, they got all of these guys. <sighs> With Power and Dahlin, 20 and 23 years of age, I'm pretty sure Connor Bedard would be a perfect acquisition for them, right? So, uh, let's say I want to throw in uh, Roman Yossi, who do they <laughs> who they don't want as well. I think the game would allow me to do that, but that would just ruin the GM mode, all right? Buffalo wouldn't want to do that. Uh, it wouldn't make their team better, and they're giving up on a potential player who's going to be better than Roman Yossi. So it's good to see that the Twitch scouts are all saying cheese and don't do it. Blow up the team, but it makes no sense. I agree. We are not going to do any trades like that. All right. Unfortunately, we can't really move up to get the first overall pick. But let's just let's just take a gander here and see what team is willing to trade away their first rounder. And it's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. Now, interesting team. Very interesting team, right? The Edmonton Oilers, they have a Connor McDavid. They have a Leon Dreisaitl. They got these guys, actually, for only two more years for Dreisaitl because that's going to turn in from a three to a two. McDavid, only three more years, right? They could be. This could be very interesting. Now, what's a player on their team making a lot of money who maybe they'd want to part ways with? Like a Cody Ceci, right? You throw in a Cody Ceci in there. And you go with a Roman Yossi. Now, they would love to do that, but they would be over the league maximum salary cap. So this is what I could do for a guy like Roman Yossi. If we're doing the full-on fire sale, we're not going to be a team that is close to the NHL salary cap. A, I'm not going to want to go long-term with anybody in free agency, so we can go year to year to year to year, right? And there you go. We turn him into a $4.5 million defenseman. So even though he's six years left at 33, and you think, wow, that goes up to 39, um, at $4.5 million, uh, he's going to be good for at least three, four years out of that six. I mean, real good. I mean, top two, and then maybe he'll drop down to a top four, right? Now, the value, though, is way in their favor. So would there be anyone else on their team that I could get back? So let's just search by trade value. I mean, they really, a uh, Holloway, this guy, let's see, when, when Dylan Holloway drafted 14th overall, a two-way forward with that medium elite potential, you could throw him in there in the pick, right? Um, what else they got? They got Darnell Nurse, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. They'd want to hold on to these players, right? Evander Kane, K Kyler Yamamoto you could get, but that's their depth that they want to hold on to. Maybe Broberg, but really only a top four. So you'd have to get, like, maybe their first-round pick for next year, their first-round pick a year after that, as we get the first overall pick, and it is Connor Bedard going to the Buffalo Sabres. Let's take a look at this man. Depth forward, medium franchise potential, 79 overall. He's got, what's his X-Factors? He's got wheels. He's got make it snappy. He's got snipe all alone, shock and awe, and one T. He is a devastating shooter with the speed to get to breakaways, and then he can finish on the breakaway as well, man. Buffalo, you just drafted yourself an absolute stud. And with Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin, I expect Buffalo Sabres to be a legitimate star. Uh, or a legitimate uh, 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 cup contender with all these stars that they have on their team. Uh, but let's go back to the Edmonton Oilers here for a second, right? So let me just uh, replicate that trade again. Uh, the, the ninth overall pick. Uh, we'll get Cody Cece in there. Cody Cece, there you go. We'll also get, uh, who was the other player that I got? It was, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. It was Holloway, right? And then I'll throw in uh, two first round picks as well. All right, and then we go Roman Yossi, and we uh, retain half of his salary. So this is the big question. You know, we there's no doubt that Roman Yossi has incredible trade value, and we can basically pick and choose what we want. But we have to make the trade make sense for the team that we're trading him to. Edmonton Oilers makes sense. But the problem is, I don't feel like we're getting enough back. 
You know, like I I've, I've gone through their t- their entire team and tried to figure out what we got. Holloway, you got you got a guaranteed medium elite, maybe he's 85, 86, maybe higher, 88, 89, but no X factors. And then if we trade Roman Yossi to Edmonton, they're probably going to be a really good team. There's no guarantee these two first round picks could be garbage. They couldn't they might not even be be freaking lottery picks, right? So, so what do you guys think on Twitch? I mean, you can see these guys, they're giving me the red light. And I agree with them. If we're going to trade a guy like Roman Yossi, we got to find the absolutely perfect piece. And uh, I feel like if I'm doing that right now, we're forcing it. And I don't want to force this trade. So if we're going to make the Roman Yossi trade, it's going to be in the offseason. It's not going to be at the trade deadline. It's not going to be at the draft deadline. All right. I want to make sure I get something really good. And unfortunately, there was no top five pick. There was no team that just had a horrible year. The Rangers, maybe. Like, like let's, let's see what we get from the Rangers. You get this year's 10th overall pick. What else we get in there? Like, like maybe... You get a, like a Lafreniere who hasn't broken out. What kind of season did he just have with the net, with the uh, New York Rain? Although he did just break out, he had a real good year. Fifty eight points is solid, right? But like you could put like a, a Lafreniere in there, maybe a Capo Caco, um, and, and then three first overall picks, right? Would that even be a good one? Renz goes to the Chicago Blackhawks center playmaker. Let's see, woo, eighty two overall, already better than Connor Bedard. And what's his X-Factors? Third Eye, Quick Draw, Quick Draw, Heat Seeker, Puck on a String and Wheels. Solid pickup. Solid pickup for the Chicago Blackhawks. Solid pickup. But let's just go back to the New York Rangers. I just want to get some trades in there so that we have some, some examples that everyone can talk about. All right? So let's say I go with the Rangers pick next year. Rangers pick the year after that. And we go Laffy Taffy and, uh, and uh, Capo Caco. All right, so there you go. You're getting two young players of the future, uh, and you're getting a 10th overall pick this year. Could probably be a top six forward or a top four defenseman. And then you get two first rounders, and I got to think that the Rangers are going to be a good team with a guy like Roman Yossi out there. So maybe 25th overall pick, a 20th overall pick. You know, it's definitely a better trade than the Edmonton Oilers. What do you guys think on Twitch, green or red? See what I mean, though? Like, if we're going to give up Roman Yossi, I want to make sure that we have something real good. And it looks, look, looks like the Twitch chat is kind of on the fence about it. They're not as against the Edmonton Oiler trade, or not as against it as they were against the uh, Edmonton Oiler trade. But it seems like here, at least, we're getting something back. So the thing I want to do is we're going to take our time with this, all right? Uh, the highest we can move up is the ninth and 10th overall pick. Let me view the draft class. Is there anyone that we want at 9 or 10? Someone that we have to have, you know what I mean? Lindstein, Allen, I mean, Haltonen, Altonen, elite sniper, right wing. Ooh, could be a good player right there. But if we commit to the rebuild, then we have to give up some player. I don't know about that, man. So, okay, okay, okay. If he's going 13th overall, maybe I can make a, a trade here, work with the uh, the New York Rangers. All right, what kind of players would you guys be willing to get or be willing to take? Because if there's, like, uh, the players with, like, two years left, want to hold on to Yossi, want to hold on to Forsberg, Duchesne I want to hold on to, McDonough I want to hold on to, uh, Tolvanen I want to hold on to, Granny Smith I want to hold on to, Tomasino, uh, need a rider. Need a rider is one I wouldn't mind parting ways with. Two years left. I could I could definitely do that. And they want Nito Need a rider. All right, all right. I could definitely try to make this happen. So if I were to trade them, Nito Need a rider. Hang on a second. Forwards. Let me see what they got. They got Panarin. They got Zibanejad. Nito Need a rider would be somewhere in their top nine. Eh, it would make them better for this season. Uh, but honestly, like for a top 10 pick, what would I have to give up? I'd have to give up like my second, like my blue jacket second. What do you guys think about that? I don't, I don't know. I don't think the Dallas, I don't think the New York Rangers would want Nino Nita Ryder for one year, giving up a 10th overall pick. Yeah. A little cheese. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So we'll save Nino Nita Ryder for maybe trading in free agency. I'd like to see if there's a better sniper available in free agency. See, see what I mean? I gotta, if I'm going to make a trade, it's got to be in free agency so I know what's available. I don't think we can do much right now, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think we can do much. So let's just, uh, let's just sim. Cause Hevnikov goes to the Montreal Canadiens. So last year they get Slavkowski. Now they get Kirill Kozhevnikov. All right. Yoink. Another two way forward. Six foot one, 192 pounds. Montreal's getting big. Montreal is getting big. Give your first. 
for uh give your first and nino to move up to 10th no nah, i don't want to do that i don't want to do like i said if uh, all of a sudden there's nobody available in free agency i want to hold on to nino nita rider he had a 20 goal season 50 points you know i haven't committed to the rebuild just yet we're kind of in tweenersville and if we're not trading roman yossi now i can't trade anyone else so let's just let's just go through it i just I, we spark some conversation for you guys um and i want to see what you guys have to say we can might still want to trade these guys but it's going to be in free agency so we have our pick at 21st overall. I'm going to call a timeout. All right, so we got seven minutes to handle or to, to work with. Let's take a look at some of these uh, draft picks that went before us, all right? So Kozhevnikov goes to Montreal. Brendan Yeager goes to the New York Islanders. 72 overall with medium elite. There you go, Islanders. Maybe you got somebody to play alongside of Matthew Barzell. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Uh, Benson, medium elite, going to the Minnesota Wild. Kovalev, oh, damn. Damn, Chicago. Damn, Chicago. They get themselves Renz, a center playmaker, medium elite, 82 overall. And then at six, they get Kovalev, a defensive defenseman, 78 overall. The Chicago Blackhawks have just uh, increased their roster in a big way. Dvorsky, uh, Kristal. Lindstein, let's see that guy. Allen going. Oh, let's see that guy that we could have uh, we could have traded up for. Levis, Haltonen. Let's see Haltonen. Oh yeah, Haltonen could have been good. 69 overall off the rush with medium elite potential. Definitely could have gone up for that, ladies and gentlemen, but we decided not to. Don't know if I want to hold on to Niederreiter or not. Telkvist, uh, Guthier, Carlson, Danielson, Hecht, uh, Richie, Cote, uh, Brustovich, Bru 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 Brzezovic, which, okay, we'll just uh, try not to pronounce that name. And here we go, the 21st overall pick. All right, so me and the Twitch scouts, we've already done some pre-scouting. Um, there's basically like five or six players that we could go for right here. Um, this first guy, Riley Height. Uh, we don't know his full potential, and he doesn't have any X-Factors. NHL ETA only two years away, so probably a good player, maybe a uh, top six potential. All right, you got Lucas uh, Drag Dragasevich. Jeez, man, I cannot pronounce any of these names. Same thing, we don't have him uncovered at all. We don't know any X-Factors. Uh, Steve Huxley, right-wing sniper, medium top six. No X-Factors. Similar style, Theo Fleury, and he's going to be ready in three years. But this guy, Emil Jarventi. Jarventi, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Maybe some Finn out there can help me out. I'm going to call him Emil Jarventi right now. Jarventi. <laughs> uh, medium top six we don't know his player type but he does have an x factor and they're th they're four bar scouted so we know he's got close quarters and beauty backhand and considering he's a left wing which is what we need i think we all agree to go with emil so musty ward yeah there's some other guys if i sc sort by potential uh, we don't have anyone fully uncovered at medium elites uh, we have somebody at low elite bales, but he's going 169th overall, so we could get him later. And then the rest is just medium top six. So Twitch scouts, I go to you. Do I have the green light for Emil Yar Yarvanti? Yarvanti. Shit, hang on a second. Let me sort by uh, this. Yarvanti. Do I have the green light, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know. The Twitch scouts. We've already gone through it. Seems like they are giving me the green light right now. Yes, they are. So, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, Nashville Predator fans, this is the first player that GM Superb Man is bringing into the team. We obviously got Boone Jenner and Phil Kessel, but those were acquisitions for the playoffs. This is a part of our future. This is the very first player GM Superb Man is drafting. Welcome to the team, Emil Jarventi. Bang! Selected 21st overall. All right. Oh, he's a sniper. Left wing sniper. Ooh, medium top six, ladies and gentlemen. And he's got three X factors. Let's go. Close quarters, magnetic, and beauty backhand. All right, so this guy off the rush can get in there. I like that. I like that. That guy's a solid pickup right there. He could definitely play on the power play. The X Factors will help the plus five. And if I could find him a playmaker down the middle, that's a good player. That's a solid good player. Emil, welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. All right, so uh, that being that, let's simulate to our next pick. Pick number 53. We're all the way here in the second round. And it looks like there are some top nine players. Low top six, top nine, top nine. Top six defenseman, top six low, top four low. Yeah, so it looks like we've already... Oh, nope. Yeah, it looks like we've already gone through all the best players here. So let's just do our best. We're going to be uh, putting more effort on scouting going forward. But let's see what we got. So um, who did we choose here, boys? It was Hickey, right? Yeah, so a lot of these guys... 
Um, with the top nine potential, ooh, playmaker though, Corey. We do need a playmaker now for Var yeah, Arventi, but what we were looking for are players with X factors, right? So none of these guys had an X factor except for this guy, Caden Price. We don't know his potential. We don't know his player type. Um, he's, it says that he's got gold seeing eye, but it's only two, two bar scouted. I don't know if I believe in that one. Corey, uh, Sam Oliver, medium elite, but it's only one bar sniper. It's only two bar. Uh, and he's only got one silver X factor. That's probably he's probably got nothing. And then look at this guy, Cody Hickey. All right, so medium top six. His potential doesn't look great, but he's an offensive defenseman. And what's interesting is I think this guy does have an X factor. Well, we know he's got send it. Send it's got four bars to it. Does he have a gold one as well? Now the reason I like this is because. Sometimes offensive defensemen in your top four actually allow too many goals. We could lead this guy in the top six with another defensive defenseman. He could stay at maybe 79 overall, 80 overall, 81 overall. We don't have to pay him too much. But because he's got the X factor, if he does, and as an offensive defenseman, he'll give a plus five to our second line power play or something like that, right? Now, I know it's a depth pick, but this could be interesting. And then after him, we really don't have much in terms of X factors. Let's see. Oh, this guy has got ones again. Uh, but again, it's only the one. So what do you guys think? This is like a depth draft pick. We got to try to get lucky here. Cody Hickey, offensive defenseman, top six. Twitch, do I have the green lights? Five foot nine, 180. What kind of points do you have? Four goals, 12 assists. And how long? Tori Krug, three years. Check players you passed. I already did that, man, my, my man. All right, so it looks like the Twitch scouts are giving me the green light for Hickey. We are going to select him. GM Superman, second pick is a defenseman. Cody Hickey, where's he from? U.S. Central. He's from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm saying it. He's from Nashville, ladies and gentlemen. A hometown boy. It is Cody Hickey. Let's make that pick. And there he is. Offensive defenseman, 63 overall. Does he have the X Factor? <gasps> He's got a gold thunderclap and send it all depth. There is a depth draft pick right there. That is beautiful. How does he have a gold? He's got a gold as a freaking top six potential. Oh, we got to grow this boy. Shea Weber 2.0. Well, he's only 5'9", 180. But he's got great long passing, and he's got his thunderclap. He'll definitely be a power play specialist. So when I think about my power play of the future, Yarvanti or Jarvantai, and uh, Cody Hickey, you've already gotten two out of the five positions covered. Solid. Smurf, Smurf Weber. All right, that's solid. Now let's see. I have the next pick at 24. Uh, let's see what that other guy would have been. Uh, no, bottom six. I might be able to get that other guy with the X Factor. Might be able to get that other guy with the X Factor. Oh, incoming trade. They want the 56th overall pick for Barbanov. No, get the hell out of here. Kostopoulos, let's see. Carter Kostopoulos. No, he didn't have anything. All right, here we go. We got our, uh, another second rounder. This is from, this is from the, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets trade for Boone Jenner. What do you guys think? This guy Price, should I take a chance on him? He's got the gold seeing eye. Ooh, I don't know. Price. I get two defensemen right there. The gold seeing eye looks good. Only 17. Yeah, but I just... Playmaker, though. Get a playmaker. Hmm. Okay, okay. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let me just... Let me just... This is this is a big pick. This is a big pick. Let me just call a timeout. Make a pick. No, no, no. Trade. Uh, offer trade. How many more picks do I have after this? Because I did trade away some depth, right? Is this my last pick or do I have a third rounder? I have this one and then two third rounders, all right? So my latest pick is 85. I want to make sure that I get that low elite guy. So hang on a second. Make pick. All right? So if I just sort by this, uh, we don't want any of these guys. The low elites. Yeah, Bales. So this guy's supposed to go 169th overall. So we'll take him with our last pick. Oh, oh my God. Manny Visakis. Grinder. Top six from USA Central. Grinder medium top six. I think we got to do that. We got to get this Visakis guy and we got to get this Bales guy. All right. We're getting both of those guys with our third rounders. So those are our two third rounders. So I got one more pick. I got one more pick. Medium top six offensive defenseman Burke. Braylon Burke. Seeing I don't know. Do I have do I have the green light to go after these three depth players from America? Braylon Burke, who's a medium uh, top four offensive defenseman at 138. Visakis is a medium top six grinder at 135. And Bales, a low elite sniper at 169. I think those are the three players we got to go. We got to do it, right? We got to do it. Green, 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 green. Trade down. No, I'm not going to trade down. 
Uh, we got to we got to act like other teams might take this. We got to keep it legit. So 138. Uh, Bales is whoa 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 whoa. 138. Bales is 169. I can take Bales last. Visaki is 135. All right. So we'll get Manny Visakis first. Manny, welcome to the team, my man. Oh, 48 overall. <laughs> Medium, medium top six. We just gotta play. We just gotta grow this guy. We just gotta grow him in the AHL. Seventeen years of age. He's a grinder of the future, boys. All right, this guy is a journeyman. He's gonna take his time. But that grinder, that penalty killer that we need to keep the puck out of the net. Depth, depth, ladies and gentlemen. Top six grinder depth. Hey, hey, whatever, whatever, whatever. We're gonna play him in the AHL. He'll get there. All right. So let's sim to our next pick. It's in the third round. We have two third rounders. So we essentially got out of that Boone Jenner trade, we got Boone Jenner and Visakis for uh, for uh, all the players that we traded away. Uh, next up, let's see. Uh, what am I? I'm drafting by potential, right? Next up, we got Bales. No, I want the other guy, the defenseman. Yeah, medium top four. Burke, Braylon Burke, 18 years of age, offensive defenseman, medium top four. Bang. 46 overall. Damn, dude. I'm going deep in the U.S. college system to find these gems. They, 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 no one is giving them a chance. Everyone's overlooking them. But they have the potential. They have the potential. They're studs, I think. Yeah, no, they're depth studs. They're depth studs, boys. I'm taking it. And then sip this into our last pick. Let's see how good this guy is. <laughs> it's the hell of an ECHL team you're building, John. That's what I'm saying, Ray. You know, I'm putting them in the freaking system right now. And last but not least, <coughs> well, excuse me, last but not least, uh, 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 Israel Bales from the U.S. Central. I'm getting all these guys from the center of the United States. The heartland, baby. Bales, welcome to the team. Yo, this guy cracked 50 overall. Let's go. Low sniper or, uh, or sniper, low elite, 18 years of age. Let's go. Israel, let's go, my man. All right, so what do we get in this draft? We got two snipers, we got a grinder, we got uh, and two offensive defensemen. So yeah, it was an offensive draft. Two snipers, two offensive defensemen, and a grinder with five picks, and that should be all she wrote for the NHL entry draft in year number one, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Nashville, your new predators. Emil Jarvantai, uh, Cody Hickey, fuck, I forget their first names, uh, M. Visakis, B. Burke, and Israel Bales. Boom, four Americans, yep. All right, I like that draft. I like that draft. We're not, they're not going to be affecting our team this year, which means that we're still available for the cup window and all that good stuff. All right, things are just taking it step by step here, step by step. All right, so now we have the resign stage. But before we do that, let's go to our coaching staff. Now, one of the things that we could do to help out our chances of winning in year number two is say, fuck it to all these coaches and fire their asses and bring in an elite Hall of Fame squad for year number two. When I look at Laflemme, the offense is good, even though we didn't get any offensive goal scoring in the playoffs or during the regular season. But our defense ain't great. If I could find another coach with an A minus, A minus, A minus, A minus, that would be really good. Also, his influence is already only only C, I should say. So if we're gonna come back with this same team, I think what we could do is improve the coaching situation. All right. Now I'm not gonna fire any of them just yet because we don't know what coaches are available, and I want to be able to see that. So we'll hold on to these guys right now. But for our uh, for our scouts, I want to fire any scout that's below C. All right, so Warner, get the hell off the team. All right, Nichols, get the hell off the team. All right, Petrov, get the hell off the team. Tom Foos, get the hell off the team. And DeKaiser, get the hell off the team. All right, so we got all those boys. We got our NHL scouts, our AHL scouts. I might even just get rid of the AHL scouts, to be honest. We got to start scouting. Yeah, you know what? I can always use, use mm, let me hold on to them for now. Let me hold on to them for now. Because, yeah, because we're not in full-on rebuild yet. I might make some trades for some AHL players. Yeah, let's, let me hold on to them for right now. Uh, so those are the scouts. There's the head coaches. The re-sign stage. All right, so cap space. This is going to be very interesting. So what I want to do is I want to try to see how much cap space we have available in free agency. See who we can sign. Try to sign them to the cheapest contracts imaginable because it's cap space is everything. That could be a trade deadline acquisition that could make us that much better for next year's playoffs. Um, but yeah, we got to do it step by step. So first off, goaltenders. UC Soros, 88 overall. Lankanen. I could bring Lankanen back, but 1.8, I got to save that. If I could give 
If we could get a goalie that's like 79 overall on a minor league contract, that would save us money. So I'm going to release Lankinen, all right? We need to put our money up front. Uh, backup goalie, I'm going to release you. And uh, Cooley, AHL fringe goalie, I'm going to release you. So the only two goalies we got in our system, Askarov and Soros, our starting goaltenders to the AHL and NHL teams. Defensemen, all right, let's see what we got. We got we got Yossi, we got Echo, we got uh, McDonough. Dante Fabro, RFA contract. What do we do with this guy? Ooh, 4.5 million for five years. Probably just sign him. I can't get him any less than 4.5 million. We should probably lock this guy up right now. What do you guys think? Qualify him. Just go for the qualify. Let them walk. Uh, Dante Fabro is going to be a good piece for us. I wouldn't mind signing him long term. What did he make last year? I, I can't even tell what he made last year. All right, so let me just hold on to him for right now. Uh, Alexander Carrier. Let's see. How much does this guy want? 2.7, 2.5. I can get him on one year, 2.5. Uh, okay, let me just hold on to that. Borowicki, we're going to part ways with. Sammy Vatnin, we're going to part ways with. Uh, Ference, 75 overall. He could play in the uh, AHL. Yeah, one year, two way. Yeah, you could play in the AHL. There you go. You can get that contract. Uh, Olsen, do you have any X factors? 20 years of age, top six. 20 years of age, though. I really don't have much. Yeah, I'll sign you. You're 20. Hey, you got nothing else in the AHL. Gravel and McHugh, and they got to get out of here eventually. Pro Cop, uh, I'm not going to sign you. 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 Top four, Burke. What do you guys think about Burke? Is he AHL ready, or should he stay in college hockey? <laughs> if anyone didn't know that, uh, that was a redundant question. Uh, or rhetorical question, never mind. 46 overall. You're not getting scout. You're not getting signed just yet, my man. Staying in college. Uh, right wingers. All right. So Colton Sissons, definitely somebody that we want to trade away, right? 2.8 million. Definitely got to get that salary off our uh, our plate. Phil Kessel. Phil. Ah, Phil. When we traded for Phil Kessel, we got Vegas to retain half of his salary, and he was only making $1.5 million right there. We got him for less than $1 million. I can't give $3 million to a guy who may drop next year. Sorry, Phil. I'm so sorry, my man. I'm so sorry, Phil. I'm so sorry. James Neal, not your gonzo. Uh, McCarron, your gonzo. Uh, Knack, uh, top nine. Wait, 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 wait. Let, me just, let me just do my due diligence. Anything? Nah, garbage. Straight garbage. You're gone. Uh, Nermi, uh, 24, 61. You garbage. You're gone. Uh, and then Vizox, you're going to stay in uh, the grinder, baby. Yeah, he's going to stay. He's going to stay down there in the uh, in the uh, U.S. college system. Jano, All right, Jano, Let's see. I want to bring these guys back because this is depth. 81 overall, 1.7 million. I'll wait on him. Jankowski, I'm going to release you. Uh, Leonard, uh, 78. If I can get you on a cheap deal, I'll bring you back. No, he's it's a little bit too much. Uh, seventy. Uh, yeah, he garbage. He's got just just get rid of him. Uh, Sanford, garbage. Just get rid of him. Uh, Smith, garbage. Just get rid of him. Uh, Yarvanti. What do you guys think about Yarvanti? Sixty-seven overall. Roll his other forward. You think he's ready for the AHL, or should he be allowed to play in Europe for another year? I think I think at least one year to Europe. I think yeah. I, I don't think sign him AHL at at sixty-seven overall. I don't think he's good enough just yet, and I don't wanna I don't wanna stunt his growth. Leave him? Yeah, leave him in Europe. Yeah, I agree. I think we should leave him. Once they get to 70 overall, then I'll bring them up, but not until then. Europe. Always keep AHL players that actually get points to help grow the young guys. Yeah, don't worry. We'll re completely rebuild our AHL. And Bales, you're gonna stay there as well. Centers, Matt Duchesne, yikes. Granny Smith, yikes. Ryan Johansson, yikes. Boone Jenner still in there. Trennan's got one more year at 1.7. Joe Thornton, Jumbo. Would you just retire already? Novak, uh, uh, high bottom six. No, I don't need that. Uh, release you. And then Huntington, I'm going to release you. All right, so there you go. Let's advance a day. Uh, David Ferentz, he is back on the team. Anton Olsen, he's back on the team. And we basically have uh, everyone either cut or signed except for three players. All right, Fabro, Jeannot, and Carrier. Interesting. So we want to sign all three of these guys. Um, and if I were to give them contracts, let's see, that'd be $4.5 million for you. Geno would be 1.8, so like 2 million, so we're up to 6.5. Carrier, uh, we're basically at the top. We're basically using up all of our cap space. So you want to just qualify them and see who's available in free agency? 
and we can save up our cap. I just don't uh, want them to want higher contracts once we get into free agency, but maybe it'll be lower. So, yeah, okay, I'll qualify them. I'll qualify them. There you go. All right, so we have their rights. Another team may offer a contract for them, but uh, I'll as soon as I can see the free agency list, I'll know what I can get. So I have two defensemen in there. Uh, yeah, and they're pretty good defensemen. It's one of them is the top four. And then the I yeah and then the other guy's my fifth defenseman Jano Jano how much does he want 1.8 1.75 yeah I might as well wait for you guys all right so that's all that taken care of and goaltenders all right so we can go into free agency now I know what I have I know what I want so let's go advanced day bang advanced day bang advanced day bang advanced day bang and here we go ladies and gentlemen free agency. Contract limit warrant. Yeah, I got to get more contracts on the team. That's all well and good. And here we go. All right, so let's see who's available in free agency. All right, now I'm not going to look at the RFAs. I just want to look at the UFAs. Tarasenko, uh, Bergeron, Pavelski, Bertuzzi, Pacioretty, Gosh Despeer, Dumba, Severson, Killorn, Jordan Stahl, Orlov, Goudreau, Dadanov, Corey Perry. There's definitely some players in here that we can acquire to uh, to load up on our team, all right? So the first thing I want to do is let's let's unload some salary cap, all right? Uh, the first player I want to unload, find trade, is, uh, is uh, what's his name? Colton Sissons, is it? Hang on. Was it Sissons? Yeah, Sissons. So do I got the green light to trade away Colton Sissons? He's almost at $3 million for another three years, but he's 80 overall, and I can use that money a lot better. I feel bad. He has been a Nashville Predator for his entire career. He's played over 500 games with Nashville, over 150 points. What's his playoffs been like? Uh, he's, got he's got 12. He's got 24 points in 70 playoff games. I don't think Nashville Predator fans would lose too much sleep if we parted ways with Colton Sissons. All right, what do we got, Twitch? What do we got? Green light? Green light? Yeah, they're giving me the green light. All right, so since we're dumping a player, we're just going to select his name, and we're just going to find a team that wants him. Arizona is willing to give up a sixth-round pick, a fifth-round pick to uh, Calgary, fifth-round pick to, uh, well, you know what? Let's find a team that's not going to come back to bite us in the ass. Yeah, Florida. I'll send him over to the, the Eastern Conference. Green light, Colton Sissons for a fifth-round pick from the Florida Panthers. Do I have it, ladies and gentlemen? Do I have the green light, Twitch chat? I could just unload him for fifth. Fifth is about the best I can get. Yeah, fifth is about the best I can get. And I want to trade him to the Eastern Conference so he can't come back to screw us over. Yeah, green light. All right, they're giving me the green light, YouTube. So here we go. Colton Sissons, thank you for everything you've done, but it is time to move. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, I was about to, ooh, I was almost to do it for the player. There you go, the fifth rounder. <laughs> oh, that was scary. Uh, yeah, Colton Sissons, three years left at 2.8 for a fifth round pick. Will it go through? Yes, it did. All right, so there's some cap space freed up right there. Uh, what else, What other contract can we free up? Uh, uh, Need a rider. Okay, so the reason I was considering trading Nino Need a rider, he's now got one year left. The reason why the the cup window works with everybody else is because even if we lose next, let, let's say we miss the playoffs next year, I can still trade every single one of them. If we go another year with Nino Niederreiter, he's a player that just walks off the team and I get nothing back from him. That's not asset management, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go down and just continue searching the salary. I want to see guys with one year left. Does Nino need a rider? Uh, Fabro, Trennan's got one. You might as well hold on to Trennan, Tolvanen. Yeah, basically everybody else on the team we want to hold on to. So if we're going to replace Nino Nita Rider, hang on a second, let me just go back in there. My bad, my bad. Hang on. Uh, actually, yeah, let me just show you guys from the forward screen instead. Main roster forwards. All right, so Nino Nita Rider on this squad is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's tied with the seventh best player on the team. So he's not even in the top six anymore, right? Tolvanen and Tomasino are better than him. We still got to play Ryan Johansson, Grandlin, Duchesne, and Forsberg. Boone Jenner's going to be on the third line. We can get Trennan and we could find some guys. When I look at Nino Niederreiter, right? 83 overall, 30 years of age. Had a pretty good season. 23 goals, 33 assists, 56 points, plus 8 on that second line. I'd like to bring back uh, another sniper, like an upgrade. What do you do in the playoffs, though? Only 2 points. So, is there an upgrade for Nino Niederreiter? A guy that we could sign to 2 years, who's better than 83 overall, that won't drop off in year number 1. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a freaking look. UFAs, forwards. All right, so I have uh, $10 million of cap space. That's the thing. you got to worry about cap space as well. 
uh, Bergeron, Tarasenko, Pav Ooh, Max Pacioretty. Hmm. Now that is interesting. He still has his exact elite potential. So even if he drops, he'll be a top six. How kind of season did he have? 25. He takes a lot of shots. 25 goals, 52 points on Carolina. What was his ice time? 16 minutes of ice. So he was in. Could drop. No, I don't think he's going to drop. He's got exact elite potential. He's not going to drop. Even if he drops to a top six, 86 overall is a top six. So hang on a second. Pacioretty could be interesting. And he's cheap too. Hang on. If I give him a contract one year, give him a two-year deal, maybe at like five and a half million, I might be able to get him. I might be able to get him right there. Uh, Pavelski. Well, Pavelski, he's got the exact elite potential, 38, but 6.6 .6 million. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Remember, we have to sign all of our other dudes as well. We have three other players to sign. Uh, Goudreau. I'm just looking for snipers right now. Because if I'm upgrading, I'm upgrading Nino Nita Rider. That's what you guys have to look at it as. And there's nobody else. So I might as well, Phil Kessel might as well hold on to Nino Nita Rider, right? Or uh, Dadanov, top six. He could drop to a top nine, though. You know what? I like that patch already signing. I could sign him to a $6 million deal. $10 million to sign those guys. $2 million extra. Nino Nita Rider. I think that works out. I think, all right, all right. GM Superb Man is going rogue. He's not listening to the Twitch chat anymore. I'm doing my own thing. YouTube, I've got years of experience. This is what I know to do. Let's get it done. Let's get it fucking done. Fine trade. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. We are not starting the rebuild yet. We are making our team better for next year while giving myself another asset, which I won't have in Nino Nita Rider. All right, so $4 million for Nino Nita Rider. Which team wants him? Which team wants him? Uh, the uh, Arizona Coyotes, a second and a third. Oh, two seconds from the Flames. Uh, second and a third from Colorado. Second and a seventh from Dallas. Second and a third. Second and a third. You know what? The Flames might be that perfect team. Edit trade. Hang on a second. Flames might be this perfect team. I might even be able to steal a first from them. Two seconds, huh? What about, what about, what about, what about you give me that first round pick? Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Their first rounder is actually a lot less in trade value because they're considered to be a real good team right now. I might be able to sneak that fat first rounder. Hang on a second. All right, so Nino need a rider for a first. Why would they want to do this? Let me just look at their team, see what they got. Um, they're obviously a cup contender. They got Uberdo, they got Lindholm, they got Kadri, they got Backlund, they got Toffoli, they got Mangiapani. So there's their top six. Dubé and then Nino need a rider becomes their, 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 what, their eighth best player. On their third line, 83 along with Dubé and Coleman. There's their top nine. Then their fourth line, Peltier, Ruzika, Rooney. They actually do need a forward because their fourth line, you're starting to get into the 70s. It's a guy, it's a rental with one year left. What's their blue line look like, though? One, two, three, four, five, six. They have a team. They have a team. And they have a goal. Oh, they have a team. All right, this team is strong. And a guy like Nino Niederreiter only makes them stronger. So you know what? They're going for it. They're, they want Nino. They want a cup. I want that first rounder. I want that first rounder straight up. Nito need a rider for a first rounder from the Calgary Flames. All right, straight up, straight up. I'm trying it. Proposed trade. Will it go through? Trade rejected. All right. So they're willing to give up the two seconds, but not the first. What else could I do? What else could I do? Draft picks. Hmm. All right. So to help with the fifths, oh, I'd like to hold on to my fourth. Uh. Give you next year's seventh as well. No, 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 you know what the hell with that. Maybe the two fifths work. Nino need a rider and two fifths for a first rounder from the Calgary Flames. Will it go through? Oh! GM Superman comes through with a solid trade, acquiring a first round pick from the Calgary Flames for Nino Nita Rider. All right, this seems like a sweet proposal. All right, now Calgary, if they make the playoffs, it's not going to be a great pick, but it's still going to be higher up than either one of those two seconds, right? Those two seconds might be in the 50s or or uh, or a high 40s. This might be in the 20s, the high 20s, but it also could be a lottery pick. You never know. You never know. But that's only what step one. That's step one. So I just freed up four million dollars. Out goes Nita Rider. In comes Pacioretty. We're not losing any X Factors. I'm getting a trade asset for next year, and I'm getting an upgrade to the position from an 83 overall into an 86 overall. All right, and it's only two million dollars more. And yeah, I can afford it. I can afford it because I have all that cap space that I freed up, and I can sign my RFAs after this. Two years, six million dollars per year. At the end of this year, I could retain half of it, give them to a team for one season at three million dollars. 
It's beautiful. I'm doing it. Two years, six million. Bang. There it is. Max patch already. I sent it, boys. I sent it. All right, so that's that. Now we got to go back to our RFAs and sign them. Hopefully I can afford them, man. Hopefully I can afford them. Uh, RFA. Uh, Fabro. All right, Fabro. What do you want? Ooh, he wants more. We should have signed him. I shouldn't have listened to you guys. We should have signed him. So let me see if I can get him a little cheap, all right? Four years at 4250 for uh, Dante Fabro. Bang. There you go. Carrier. Let's see, uh, 2.7, yeah, 2.7 for three years, I'll give it to you. Let's see if I can get it for 2.5. All right, I don't want another team offering them, boys, so I'm going to give them the contracts right now. And then Jano, uh, three years, yeah, I'll give you three years at uh, 1750. All right, there you go. There you go. So that should sign all four of those guys. Yeah, because those three guys were under 8 mil. And then the six mil for, oh man, I might be close. I might be close. I might be close to the friggin' limit. Hopefully I can afford patch already. <laughs> oh man, hopefully I didn't screw up. Now, next, but uh, last but not least, the coaching staff, all right? Uh, so is there a better head coach that we could acquire than La Flemme to actually help out our, uh, our uh, what's it called, our chances for the upcoming playoff run? All right, offense, defense, penalty. Oh, here we go, this guy. Cracknell, veterans. Oh my God, bringing a veteran head coach. What was his, what was his, uh, 48, 44, 28, and 10. Uh, the team doesn't like him. <laughs> Old cycle. Oh my God. Hmm. Hmm. That's, uh, that's not great. What about you? Uh, 62%. A lot of the teams likes this guy. Pinch shoot, pinch shoot. What about my defense? Uh, McDonough's not liking it. Trennan. Who, who? He wants 3 million. Yeah, I know. I can see that. I'm just trying to, like, our coach needs to get upgraded big time. Um, a play, you know what? That A for defense is nice. A plus, you know, this guy down here, the 2.8. Yeah, generalist, head coach. A, A plus, A minus, A minus, B, and A. I like this guy. This generalist. Mangon. Jaden Mangon. And his record was 25, 33, and 4. So he was on a shitty team last year. 54% umbrella balanced across the board. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Jaden Mangon. We, we need you because our head coach is Gonzo Alonzo. All right, I'm, I'm signing him. Five years? Uh, You can have a, a, a two-year contract <laughs> at uh, $3 million per year. All right. There you go. Head coach. Boom. $3 million per year. I'll try to sign this guy. Now, what is our other head coach looking like? I'm going to have to fire him. Yeah, see, this is that B, that B right there. That's why our power play was shit. We got no points in the power play, and our defense was garbage in the third period. This guy and his coaching influence is C. Just, just not not a good head coach. So I'm going to fire Laflemme. All right, Antoine Laflemme. Boom, you've been fired. You have been fired. All right, so hopefully that head coach signs. If he doesn't, we'll go with somebody else. All right, there's a lot of moving pieces in the air. Did GM Superman screw this team up, or is it all going to fall into place for him? And, uh, oh, yeah, and last but not least, the head, the, the scouts, right? The scouts. So what do I got here? I need, I got Russia. I got, yeah, I got uh, the SHL and the Finnish League. I got three in Europe. I need, I need OHL, WHL, and QMJHL. And then another US. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, so first up, QMJHL. I guess I'll just take somebody with the C. Yeah, Giroux. Bernard Giroux. There you go, buddy. You're on the team. OHL. Oh, B minus Schneider. Let's go. Juliana Schneider. And WHL. Petrie. Let's go. Uh, last but not least, US. Want to keep scouting in the United States. Uh, 32 years of age. Get you. And yeah, there you go. All right, so pieces are moving. Let's see, is there uh, any chance that this all works out, or am I going to have to go out and get Evgeny Dadunov, or maybe even bring back Phil Kessel as the replacement for Nino Nita Ryder? We'll see. We will see. So let's advance the day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what happens here. Lots of moving parts in the air. This is one of the heads, uh, the head scouts, all right? So the scout, Despray, is on the team. Uh, let's keep on advancing. Uh, yes. Yes! We got our head coach, Jaden Mangon, baby. Mangon, we are hoping that his, uh, his, 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 what's it called? His dedication towards defense and the power play is going to help our veterans for a one-year run. He's gone, man. He's gone. <laughs>
<laughs> well, his, his career might be gone after his first year where he was below 500. Now he's coming to the Nashville Predators. Bernard Giroux, he's signed. Uh, Alex Petrie, he is signed. So there's the scouts. Nothing yet on our RFAs. Uh, Juliana Schneider as side or Max Pacioretty. Uh, Alexander Carrier is on the team. Good. So I was able to get him on a little bit of a uh, uh, a discount. Uh, Tanner Janot, he's on the team. A little bit of a discount right there. Dante Favro, big discount from him. I got him down at 4500 Okay. So our three RFAs have all signed. And now it's just Max Pacioretty. Uh, Jenner for a second and a third. No, thank you. Not doing that. Come on, Patches. Come on, Patches. Come on, Patches. Yeah! And GM Superb Man does it. He flips Nino Niederreiter for a first, replaces him with Max Pacioretty, gets all the RFAs signed, and gets, uh, and brings in a better head coach. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. That is how it is done. We, we, we acquired pieces for the future, just like the Boone Jenner trade, where I brought in the second that ended up being that defenseman. I got a first for Nino Niederreiter, but we actually have a better player than Nino Niederreiter. Got a better head coach and got all of our young guys signed for three years. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And the Twitch chat right now are saying, well, what if you miss the playoffs? Even if we miss the playoffs, I now still have the trading asset that would have walked off the team in Nino Nino Ryder. All right. And I have another first round pick from Calgary. So you can make the argument that I did do a little bit of a minor rebuild while not even hurting our team again. Where is he? Where is he? Pacioretty is now the fourth best player on the team. Two years left. I can trade him at the end of this year if things don't go well, which we're probably going to do. That is solid. That is solid. And I still have $2 million of cap space available. All right. Sweet. So what are we going to get signed now? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at our team. Oh, I need a backup goalie. Right. We're going to need a backup goaltender. Uh, defenseman. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to need a sixth defenseman. And forwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Kem will probably play in the AHL for one, but so I have two forwards. All right, so i gotta got to find some depth here. Got to find some depth. Uh, free agency. All right, so let's just do this one step at a time. All right, so UFAs, goaltenders, sort by the best. We want to find somebody who's making, like, less than a mil, Who's got some potential in him and maybe can grow. Like, here we go. Uh, Gustafson. Here we go. 25 years of age. 1.1 million. Is there anything else? Uh, Di Pietro. Oh, hell yeah. Let's get these guys. Di Pietro and Gustafson. All right. So, you. Oh, yeah. Uh, one way. Two way deal. There you go, my man. Are we still good? Shit. Hang on. You guys still here? My screen just went black there for a second. So I'll try a one-year deal, 900K, two-way for him. I knew it! It went demon mode! I knew it! I see it, don't worry, I see it. What the hell, man? My damn friggin'... <laughs> we're back, right? No, we're back. It's all right. <laughs> demon mode. Uh, Di Pietro. So I'll sign Di Pietro. There you go. Uh, what about you, Gustafson? How are you feeling on a one-year deal? No, he wants a little bit more. So I'm not going to sign Gustafson. I can get more, for my, uh, more bang for my buck in Di Pietro. What about anything else? Fringe starter? Any medium starters down here? Starter. Lindberg. 24. He might he might grow. I need I need someone to back up uh, Askarov. So there you go. Two-way. Save some money right there. All right. So there's two goalies. Uh, we're going to need a sixth defenseman. So let's try to find somebody. Remember, we can always sign someone at the uh, trade deadline. Or not sign someone. Acquire someone at the trade deadline. Let me just all the way down here. There you go. Mitchell. Top six, 78 overall. Let's get this guy. Uh, one way. Yeah, let's go. Just sign him up. Uh, what else we got? Anything else down here? Low top four, flurry. Anything else down here? 78. Just looking for just looking for younger players. Here we go. Uh, Simone Benoit. No, Walsh. Riley Walsh. One mil, though. Yoho uh, Levy. Can sign a bunch of these guys after yeah you know what you have like no cap i know i know i know i know i know i know okay so we'll bring in that one guy and then i i need like a, a fourth line center probably like a two-way forward for the for the uh for the fourth line for the penalty kill Let's see if we can find rask depth two-way forward victor rask has he played with nashville before no he didn't victor rask yeah 80 overall i mean might as well get him uh, one year. Oh, Edmonton wants him. No, that's gonna. I'm gonna be in. A, I'm gonna be. No, he's not gonna get. Eponiemi, 24 years of age, playmaker. Let's get him. Calgary wants him. Son of a bitch. 
Gotta find players that no one's uh, targeting. Godet. What's your face offs like, Godet? 73. That's not good. Howden. 76. Oh, but he can play the penalty kill? Mm, well, that was the other head coach, though. Anderson. Ooh, Elias Anderson. We're finding some debt players down here. Yeah, get this Elias Anderson guy signed. Yeah, I'll try one year, one million dollars. Uh, Logan Brown, 25. Hell yeah, I'll get you signed too, my man. Oh, you want 1.4? No, that's a little bit too much. Sorry, I can't do it. Uh, Galchenyuk, uh, Lewis. And then I got to fill out the AHL team, but I'll do that eventually. Uh, Pedersen, top nine. I'm just, I'm just, just scanning, see if we can find any gems down here. No, it doesn't look. Oh, top six, Schnarr, 24 years of age. Yeah, that could be something. Get you signed. There you go, buddy. Uh, Bunneman, Grinder. Nah, I think we're good. All right, so let's advance some days again. Let's see what we got. Oh, also, is there um, is there like an AHL head coach that we can start growing right now? Darsh. Yeah, he's not great. Let me just see. Is there anyone that I could start signing? For the AHL right now. B, 48 years of age. Veteran, Gervais. Uh, ooh, veterans. But why would I want a... No, why would I want a veteran head coach? No, you know, I don't know what kind of head coach I want just yet. I think I want, like, a forward head coach. we got to figure out what our... our yeah, we, we don't have time for a head coach just yet. So what about our secondary head coach? What do we got? We got two B minuses. What if I bring in, yeah, like this guy's got to go. We got to bring in like a B for the uh, assistant coach or the alternate associate coach. Yeah, let me see what I got. Yeah, this guy, associate coach. You want to be my associate coach? I could use you. I got a bunch of veterans on this team that need you, my man. NHL associate coach, I will pay you. I will pay you $2 million. I will pay you $2 million over two, uh, $2 million per year over two years. That's a $4 million if you can't do math. It's a lot of money. And I got a lot of veterans on this team that need your help, buddy. All right, so NHL associate coach, two years at $2 million. Bang. There you go. Uh, let me back out and let me bus. How, is it any good? Doesn't really do any teaching. Now, this guy's even better. He's got the penalty kill. He's not good 5v5, this Whitfield guy, but the Mangon and the other guy should be good enough. So let me fire bus. There you go. We'll leave the AHL squad the way it is. Scouts. How many scouts? Oh, I can get one more scout. What do we want? Uh, U.S. Central... Probably just another U.S. scout, right? Because there's three United States categories. So hang on. Uh, USA. McTaggart. No, I want him. Vancouver and Detroit. I'm taking him. Zachariah McTaggart is mine. Don't even try. Don't even try, my man. Uh, good. Very good. All right, so let's advance the day again. Let's see if we get those free agents. Zachariah McTaggart is on the team. Good. Uh, advanced day. Jean Gervais. Yes. All right. So we got the veteran head coach, NHL associate. Let's go. He wanted to be a head coach, but he's a veteran on, or he's a, he's an associate coach on my team. All right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our head coach situation has been upgraded along with our roster has been upgraded. We're one year older, but we're coming back for another chance at the Stanley cup. Uh, Di Pietro's on the team, Schnarr's on the team. Damn it! Lias Anderson went through with the Vancouver Canucks, you pieces of shit. Ian Mitchell's on the team. Uh, Philip Lindbergh is on the team. All right, so we got a few. How many more players can we sign here? We might as well just get a bunch for the AHL. We don't have any young prospects. Yeah, I have to get like seven players. So what are we weak on? Still have $1.9 million. So my two goalies are taken care of. I can go with Di Pietro as the backup and Lindbergh as the starting. Actually, Askarov and Lindbergh. Uh, defenseman. It's like a one, two, three, four, five. We could trade for a six defenseman over the course of the year. And then the AHL, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're basically done. Forwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I want like two more two way forwards if we're not playing Kemmel. And then, like, oh, yeah, we need a bunch of forwards. We need a bunch of forwards on this team. So let's just go out in there and sign some. Uh, UFA. All right, so centers. Do I get any good uh, depth centers here? I just want people that are less than a million dollars. Here we go. Camp. Uh, one year. Yeah, that'll do. One year, one million dollars for camp. Good. Uh, let's keep going down. Let's just find some younger players. Power forward. I think I could sign him, but 1.4, I, I got to keep it low. Now, Goddett, I'll sign you. Go and one more two-way forward. Howden, that's a little bit much. Uh, Geeky, there you go. I'll sign you. 
All right, so there you go. Three centers. Let me get three left wingers now. Uh... You, Matt Nieto, 30 years of age. I just want younger players in case they have the chance to grow and you, you get lucky. I'll bring Leonard back. I cut him, but I might as well bring him back. He's cheap. There you go. Uh, Grinders, Sanford, no. 24 years old. Uh, Cates. Yeah, even though he's got bottom six, whatever. Bring him on the team. We need some AHL. We need some AHL firepower. Uh, and then Sniper, Rustalainen. Bring you on the team. There you go, buddy. Uh, right wingers. Let's go down here. Uh, Hinostroza, no. 34. Grinder, McEwen, no. 26. Fisher, too much money. Two way forward. Uh, who is this? Anderson. What's it? Josh Anderson? What's his first name? Shit. Joey Anderson. Right, 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 right. Uh, and then playmaker, Malgan. I need a playmaker, so that's actually not that bad. There you go, Malgan. All right. So there are the three right wingers signed. Or no, that was only two. Hang on. That was only two. Highmore, uh, yeah, let's get this guy Highmore, there you go, and I'll sign two defensemen as well, just so we uh, have a full team, and we are basically ready to go, uh, Bull you just give me somebody in the low 26 overall, or 26 years of age, that looks good for me, very nice, and right defenseman, 24 years of age, Flurry. let's just get him signed. All righty, so we have taken care of everything. I think that should be enough for our squad now. That'll fill out the AHL. Our fourth line is going to be a little bit weak to start the year. Our third line defensive pairing is going to be a little bit weak to start the year as well. Um, but we can make some trades, and uh, like I said, it's really about our top four defensive core and our uh, top six forward core. We need those guys to just carry us, basically. All right, so proposed trade. How many players do we have under the team now? Uh, 43 out of 50. Yep, that should be good enough. We still have a little bit of cap space available. But that's our team, ladies and gentlemen. We are set to go. And the fire sale. The fire sale. It definitely begins next year because Tomasino and Tolvin and their contracts are both up next year. But we want to sign them. So we have one more year to go. One more year to go. AHL goalie coach, John. Does my AHL not have a goalie coach? Really? The Twitch scouts notice something? I see that. What are you talking about, you fools? They're always trying to troll me. So before we end this video, let's jump to regular season or the preseason and see what kind of team we have on paper. And then we can uh, we can take it from there. All right. So let's jump to year number two. Okay. So here we are. Year number two, ladies and gentlemen. It is official. And I forgot to mention this to you guys in the, uh, in the earlier part of this video. But we have officially, officially retired number six. No one wearing the Nashville Predator jersey will ever don the number six. That forever will be known as Shea Weber's number. Shea Weber went out with uh, in, a, in a blaze of glory in round one. Home ice on front of his fans that love him. And he had two points. No one will ever wear number six again, Shea Weber. I promise you, buddy. All right. So let's take a look at um, our team, what it looks like. And we're going to leave it there because it's very important, very important that we get a good simulation this year. All right. If we miss the playoffs, all of these moves were for nothing. I think that we have a better chance of winning a cup than we do making the playoffs. And I know what you're going to say. What the hell do you mean? The simulation can be wank wanky sometimes, right? We don't have those superstars to dominate during the regular season. Um, you could go on a losing streak, and then all of a sudden your division is really tough. I feel like if we can just get this team into the playoffs, and if we get a lucky cup run, some lucky simulating, I never know. You never know. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if we missed the playoffs. So... Oh, this is what I mean. We gotta, I gotta, we gotta stop the simulation. I gotta ask these fans what they think. All right, because I want to make sure I do this the right way. So Soros and Di Pietro, and Di Pietro actually grew to an 80 overall. Look at that. So me going after a younger goalie, uh, paying him cheap. He's turned into an 80 overall. That's solid. Uh, defensively, all right. So Roman Yossi has lost his exact elite or ex his exact franchise potential. He is beginning to drop his Roman Yossi. Now I know what people are going to say, Johnny, you missed a chance to uh, trade him. His trade value. When players are in the, uh, the 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 90 overall category, they keep that trade value. So it's not the potential that's going to lower his trade value. It's his overall combined with his salary and his years left. All right. So when we trade him at the end of this year. He's going to be a 34-year-old defenseman with four years left making uh, $4.5 million per year. That trade value will still be way up there. All right, do not worry about a damn thing. 
All right, so hang on a second. Let's go back to edit lines. Uh, let us uh, roster moves. Yeah, let me just bring up all the best players. I kind of got sidetracked there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So Mitchell's going to be our sixth defenseman. It doesn't look good, but that is absolutely something that we can improve on come the trade deadline, all right, or over the course of the year. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to trading away like a second round pick or a third round pick. Not trading away the first, but I wouldn't be opposed to trading away one of those. Uh, and then the forward core, let's see, well, do I have uh, seven defensemen? Three, four, five. I need seven defensemen. So Cal Yunyuk, you're going to come up as well. And then, yeah, that's going to be all the forwards. What do you guys think about uh, Kemmel? Now, how good is Kemmel? What do you guys think about Kemmel? 80 overall is Kemmel. He's still a depth forward. What do you guys think? Now, I personally think Kemmel should play in the AHL one more year. 80 overall means like he's right there on the brink, but I think he would benefit from another year because basically he's going to be playing fourth line ice time in uh, on our team. All right, give Kemmel nine games. Yeah, maybe we won't want to do that, but this is where I want to hear the YouTube fans. You know, what do you think? Now, I'll take a look at him in the uh, on the lines to see how it all plays out. But I think it would be better for him to be in the AHL just for this season. But we'll see. We'll see how our lines up look, uh, our lines look. All right. So head coach prefer lines. There you go. So it's saying to go back with Forsberg, who's still got his exact elite. Duchesne still has his exact elite, so he's not dropping off. And Tomasino. Well, we want Tolvin in up there. All right. There you go. Patcheretti. So Patcheretti dropped from an exact elite down to an exact top six, but that's okay. He's not going to go any further than like 85 overall. It's when they drop to top nine is when they get that. So we got patches for one year, baby. He did not drop an overall. He just dropped in his potential. Uh, Granny Smith, uh, oh, Ryan Johansson, was he always top six or did he, did he drop? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Uh, Granny Smith, uh, Boone Jenner, Camel, and Tomasino. All right, I guess Kemmel could play that third line. Then Trennan, Camp, and Janot. Who's Scratch? Kiki, Goddett, and Kalyunyuk. I mean, what do you guys think? I, I just, is Kemmel suffering down here? He wants, he doesn't even like this head coach, to be honest. I could put him on the first line plus five, but we got to make the playoffs this year. That's my, that's my problem, right? It's going to be our top six with a pretty good third line, but then we're going to get, like, like Janot is better in there or something. Then can I get, like... You, you there. There you go. There it is. All right, Granny Smith on the third line with De Jenner and uh, Jano, uh, Tomasino, Jan, uh, Johansson, and Patch already. So two playmakers with the sniper, and then Tolvanen still up there with Duchesne and Forsberg. Right. So pretty good. We got an 85 overall on the third line now, and then Trennan is an 82, and I think I would want to take off Camel, guys. I honestly do. So I'll leave it to the YouTube fans. What do you guys think about uh, Camel? But I think I'd rather go with like a God Dead or something, and just have a two-way forward who can kill off penalties. All right, so you guys let me know there. Uh, defensively, Roman Yossi and Fabro plus one. Can we get any plus ones with anyone else? No, it doesn't look like it. So Fabro, yeah, you could play up there. And then McDonough and Ekholm. Yeah, that could work. If we want to get the plus one, get Fabro playing. And then Carrier back here on the third line with Ian Mitchell. Uh, what's his first name? Is it Ian? Yeah, it's Ian Mitchell. All right. Uh, power play. We can still get the plus five with our boys. Duchesne, Forsberg, Roman Yossi, Tomasino, Tolvanen. Uh, we got Pacioretty in there. Uh, Granny Smith, Johansson, and Jenner. Yeah. And then the penalty kill. Penalty kill. Trennan, Jenner, McDonough, Yossi. Second line penalty, penalty kill. Granlin, Camp, Fabro, and Ekholm. And then the third line. Yeah, Jenner. It's probably if I take out Johansson there. It's, it's Johansson and Carrier. They're both offensive players. But as long as I have a good first two line penalty kills, that'll be fine. All right, and then the goaltender situation, UC Soros. And in the AHL, what do we got? If I just go best lines, anyone scratched here? McEwen and Mattier. So I think I'd rather put Kemmel back here, boys, just for one more year. Uh, defensively, let the AHL team grow. And then we got Askarov in the net, yeah. So I think we're better. We're a better team than we were last year. We don't have Phil, but we have uh, Pacioretty. We don't have, uh, what's his name, Nino Niederreiter, but we have Pacioretty. So we're going to have to find... At the trade deadline, over the course of the year, a replacement for the fourth. Because we could get two better players down here that could help out the penalty kill. But the top six is basically made. And then also one defenseman that we could acquire as well. They'll both be retained players with, uh, with top six. Maybe some veterans, all right? But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. And our coaching staff, the change to this. Hopefully we have a better simulation because of these two guys. Our NHL and associate coach, Mangon and Gervais. 
So we're not going to do any simulating in this video. I want you guys to absorb everything. The NHL draft, the offseason, free agency, our RFAs, our trades. Give it all to me. And what should the plan be for year number two? All right. If we are going to blow it up, it's not going to be at the trade deadline. It's not going to be at the uh, the draft. It's going to be next year's offseason. All right. At free agency. Then we can have the fire sale. But until then, I want to think of ourselves as a competitive team trying to win the Stanley Cup here in year number two. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys next time.